What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Alexano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello everybody. What is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my new, no more Zoom, StreamYard virtual studio with an amazing guest, Esther Blum. Esther, how are you? Hi. Hi, Jay. I'm so excited to be here. It's so exciting to have you here. I'm definitely privileged to have you. And as I now do at the beginning of every Jay Campbell podcast, I want to do a dedication. And I want to say right now, I'm going to ask the universe that this podcast creates an abundance for not only Esther and I, but every person whose soul comes into the vibration of the experience. Namaste. Esther mm. is a four-time best-selling author. She is an integrative dietitian and a high-performance coach, and she is also a very high-vibration being, I've come to find out. So this podcast is going to go in a, a bunch of different directions, but each of which will be amazing. Esther, as I dial do on the Jay Campbell podcast, I kind of like to ask my guest because of the world is so amazing right now or so unstable, depending on your perception. What are your thoughts on June 10th, 2021 about this current, you know, material realm that we're all in? <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely an opportunity for growth and expansion. I think it's an opportunity to have really hard conversations. I think it's an opportunity to crack open conversations around race, politics, sexuality. Um, I think it's an opportunity to cultivate a culture of kindness and inclusivity. Uh, on a personal level, you know, it was a really um, transformative and challenging year for us as a family. And, um, you know, we, we had a lot, my, my father, we lost my father. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, a week before my son's bar mitzvah, we, he was in a nursing home. We didn't see him the last, you know, six to eight weeks of his life. Um, and then, you know, we, we moved schools like in the middle. I mean, it was like, and, and it was one of those months where everything kind of, or one of those years where everything happened really quickly and really fast. Mm -hmm. But then the storm, it's like a tsunami that blows in, you know, a tsunami doesn't last that long, but the right. effects last for years and years. So that's kind of where I feel. So I, and, and I question, I try and stay open and question, right? Okay. Yes. I feel grief and I feel sadness, but I also feel so much joy and so much relief of if the, if the, uh, course of events didn't happen the way they would have, we wouldn't be where we are now. So, you know, that's what I love about all this. There's just, there's a lot of duality in where we're at today. And I'm, open to exploring it. It's complicated. It's very complicated, I think, right now in the world. But I, I think that's how change is born. You know, it's, you know it's, it's a catalyst for change where we are. 
Yes, and and very well said. And yes, this is a dualistic experience. And when you really do work on yourself, which speaking to you, I clearly can tell that you have, uh, you do look at things from you know a perception of the neutral observer, right? Like this happened to me. Now I can react to it, right? And I can get emotional and you know whatever reactive you know response comes or. I can be essentially balanced and centered in my view and I can say, does this serve me? And if it doesn't, I just detach from it and let it go. And that, that to me is, you know, that's the work of the master, you know, a person who has done enough work on themselves to get to the point where they're always in the middle, you know, they don't really allow certain events like your father passing, which, you know, in most people is a traumatic experience. Right. Like I, I, I mean, I, again, I knew this was going to happen on this podcast, but you know, we, you, there's a lot of different directions you can go with that. If you're open to explore that, because, you know, my wife and I are very, very advanced in, in our, you know, inner work practice and we've gone way beyond, and I can tell you're there now because just the way you are with your dad's experience in that. And I, and I noticed that you didn't have like a visceral, you know, emotional reaction, but um, you know, so many people when death happens, it's a very traumatic experience and they get into the vibrational experience of the pain, you know, or the suffering or the loss or, you know, there's a million adjectives, but if you're looking at it again from the center, Hey man, that person, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your father, whomever had an amazing life. And that person is now change their expression, right? It's not their physical body is no longer here, but now their energy of their soul, their spirit, their higher self, however your spiritual perception of it is, is now into the greater, you know, universe. And from an energy standpoint, then that being is still around you if you're open to that idea or that awareness. And so it's kind of crazy when you see people who are so stuck in the pain and the suffering and the loss mm -hmm. of losing a physical person in their life you know, who every year they go to the, the burial and they sit there and they get into that pain and they wish they were still here or they miss them or whatever it is, instead of, yeah. instead of celebrating their birth or celebrating their experience being with them. And it's a choice, I think, for all of us to like, what path do you want to take? Do you want to vibrate into that? You know, he's gone or she's gone. I'm sad. I wish they were here. I didn't get a chance to say what I wanted to say. Or do you want to be like you were like, Hey, my dad's gone, but you know, I'm honored his presence and his energy still. Yeah. Well, he was, well, thank you. I mean, and it depends, right? I, I did lose someone very close to me when I was, uh, you know, he was 23 or 24. Um, and so I do, I, I do still tear up when I hear certain songs on the radio and I do think sure. he should be here. Like, well, I'm sad he didn't get to ha have kids or I'm sad. I can't talk to him about the elections mm -hmm. and all that. But right. in both the, in these examples, right. in both of these uh, ends of the spectrum, I am absolutely connected to both on the yeah. other side. Right. And my dad shows me plenty of signs that he is still here. Um, my other friend who passed shows me plenty of signs he's still here. So it's just, it's not the end of yeah. a relationship. It's just the beginning of a new one. And so, yes, it's, and and sure, I mean, Frame was listening and thinks, well, I still have to grieve. Of course, grief is, it's a continuum for sure, but it is how you appreciate um, the in experience and the interaction. And my dad was an exceptional physician. So I keep his lifetime achievement award, you know, on the bookshelf in my office and look at it every day. It reminds me like you're here to serve. You're here to be kind and heal people and take care of people. And so, you know, yeah, I mean, he touched all of us in such amazing, amazing ways. I still have his scrubs from his medical residency. Wow. So <laughs> he's That's amazing. Awesome. How, yeah. how, did your father, how did your father die? Well, he had COVID. Uh, wow. He got COVID in the nursing home. And that, I mean, he was frail. He was 91. It's not like right. he was okay. so he had he a short life. life. But his, his dad lived to be 105 and a half. So we were hoping for, you know, right. a little more mileage. Right. But um, no, he, but he, you know, thankfully he died peacefully in his sleep. Um, so, uh, you know, he just slipped gently away. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Well, I mean, again, I, 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 my, my, I, I don't want to even say I'm sorry. He, he was 91. He was a brilliant yeah. physician. 
he affected, I'm sure, literally thousands of souls in his life, and he's still doing it to this day. And I, you know, I appreciate your perception of it. You know, something that you said, though, I think we could explore deeper because when people say to you, well, I have to grieve, do you? Do you really have to grieve? I, I believe, you know, I, I was brought up uh, as a conservative Jew and Judaism <laughs> has Judaism has a year long grieving process yeah, where, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, and, and you go through the seasons and um, it takes time. I, I believe in, um, you know, grief having the stages and having the acceptance piece of it um, and just for me, that was just letting myself feel whatever I felt and just being really quiet, just unplugging, spending a lot of time in nature. It's always where I see you, my dad. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Um, and so for me, grief is, is letting yourself feel, but also, right, not being debilitated by it. Um, I didn't curl up in a ball either. I took a week off work and then I went back. Uh and just it just takes time for some people, again, for a very traumatic, sudden death, a, a car crash, a massive heart attack. I mean, that that can be an absolute trauma, in my opinion. And you you have to, um, you know, have the tools to kind of move through that and yeah. understand how to process it and how to express your feelings through it. And your I think that's what you're saying. You're not saying suppress by, by the way, your you're, I'm, I'm testing you and your answers are amazing. Uh, so, so my perception, and by the way, we are all influenced by our spiritual slash religious influences as children, whatever you're brought into Judaism, Catholicism, Protestantism, yeah. Islam, you know, all of them, you know, they all come from the same tree or some branch of the same tree. Just they're differentiated, but, um, I mean, you're right. I mean, we react based on how we were perceived or what our perceptions were as children, right? So like when you're born, you know, you were born into certain cultural norms and mores and, you know, again, whatever religious, you know, uh, belief or creed or ideology you are in, that comes part of it. So obviously, uh, you know, Judaism, there's a grieving process. It's part of the deal, right? I mean, Catholicism doesn't have anything like strict or that you're supposed to adhere, but it's the same thing. I mean, you know, my, my wife, Monica, uh, her mom was, you know, extremely devout Catholic. And, you know, her statement was like, Monica, if you care, you worry. Right. So it's like, everybody has these like attachments from their parents and then their parents before them. And, you know, generational, it's like that generational trauma, you kind of mentioned it. And it's like, there, there are certain things that that's just who we are. You know, we're like attached to them, but I would argue anyway, my whole point with this is that, you can get to a point where you do not attach to the pain or the energy yes. or whatever it is, whether it's, it's not even negative or positive, it's just an energy. And you look at that energy again, from that place of neutrality and you say, you know, I'm going to honor this person, you know, from a highest and best standpoint. Right. And this person, like your father will use him as example, was an amazing spirit that served humanity. He served creation. Right. And really at his highest yeah. and best position, who, who knows how many thousands of people he healed, right. Or helped to heal. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. Like if we get to that place and again, this is a lot of work to get there, but you, you know, you said you go into nature, you know, and that's the place to be uh, because that to me is like divinity. That's like the creative energy of the whole cosmic universe is in nature. But, um, but if we look at your dad from that center place, there's no grief. Because your dad was a being who served at his highest and best good, right? So like the grief is our expression of attaching to the pain of him not being here. But if we get to a place where he's, his energy and his soul is always around us, there's no grief. Yes. And, and, you know, also, you know, his body was really, he was quite frail uh, and, and it was, and he, he suffered physically some of the last years of his life too. So it was really a free, um, very freeing. My son wrote, he's 14, uh, but he was 13 at the time. And he wrote a beautiful tribute to my father. And one of the things he said was now he is free from his aged so body. Awesome. And, and that was, I mean, we all witnessed it. It was heartbreaking and hard to see this healer, this amazing man. And he was really suffering for things that sure. could not be fixed at that point. So 
that was, you know, where we all felt a sense of relief. I didn't have to worry about him so much anymore, you know, that, and that was very freeing too. I, and I had a dream uh, after he died that he hugged me. He was, you know, when he was the latter part of his life, he was very bent over. He, uh, he had degenerative discs. So, uh, so in the dream, he was standing tall. He was muscular. He hugged me tight. He was strong. I was like, yes, this is great. This was now I know he's so happy. He was his younger self. I was like, perfect. So, you know, he, he lets me know he's good. That's awesome. He really I, is happy. He's good. That was yeah. probably the real him. You know, I mean, I, you yeah. know, when I, get into oh, my, yeah. when I get into my deep, like, you know, spiritual metaphysical, you know, discussions mm -hmm. or conversations like with, you know, people, it's like, well, what is really the dream, right? Is the dream this physical and the real life is when we're sleeping at night, you know, and we're in the astral or, you know, the, the interdimensional or whatever you want to phrase it, you know? So, I mean, it's like maybe in the dream, you got to see your dad one last time, you know? Yeah. It's it's an it's an interesting question, but uh, but that's awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that's so awesome that your father was a physician and that you actually followed in his footsteps. So I mean, kind of like obviously the stuff that you do, and that's where we're going to go with this. And I know, I know this is going to even get a lot deeper. Um, so you you've written you're a dietitian, right? You you understand nutrition backwards and forwards. You've written four four best selling books, which is amazing. Congratulations. Um, you're a high performance coach, you know, from that standpoint, like how important, and this is a really important question because after last year, whatever last year, however you want to label 2020, like you, you actually did a really good job of like, it was, you know, it's an opportunity, right? Because people like us who are in the health and you know wellness space, you know, people have let themselves go, you know, the fear, uh, the loss of, jobs and income and all the stuff that happened last year, you know, put a lot of people in a panic fight or flight state. And obviously their physicality was lost. You know, people have added a lot of body fat, you know, they've completely stopped exercising gyms are closed. I mean, we could go on and on and on, but like from a standpoint of diet and how really important it is, I mean, has there ever now been a more a time more pronounced where we can prove that your nutrition is everything? It's everything. And it only gets more and more important as time goes on because it's not only us, it's our children. And exactly. we're seeing we're seeing kids with rampant nutritional deficiencies. We're seeing obesity. We're seeing heart disease, you know, fatty plaque streaks in children who are 10, 12 years old. Insane. So Insane. and our food is, you know, more and more at risk and process. So to me, it's yeah, it it's urgent. It's like blaring, 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 urgent. Uh, at this well, point let me time. ask you this because you're the person to ask this. Like I have these conversations with my wife and our friends. I mean, like if you go to the grocery store, even in organic whole foods, sprouts, whatever, look at the crap Esther on the shelves of these stores. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what do you do? I mean, like an intelligent person like us, who understands nutrition, you know, we understand insulin dysregulation and metabolic disease and all these things. Like even for us, it is a chore yes. to find real food, organic sourced, fresh caught grass fed, you know, yeah. to, to feed our kids or our families. I mean, it is becoming harder and harder to yeah. actually just eat like in a wholesome way. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> I notice, I mean, it's hilarious. Like I'll go to Whole Foods and you know, it's the, I do the majority of my produce shopping there. We, we grow, we have raised beds at our homes. So That's we, so we awesome. grow a lot too, which is really nice. Um, but I'll go to Whole Foods and get the produce. But if my son comes to Trader Joe's with me, the, the shopping carts look completely different. He right. just throws in, he's like, oh, well, can I get some crackers? And then can right. I get some chocolate? And I then know. can I get the, 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 the peanut butter cups? And, and I'm like, oh my God, how? Like where he just has a nose for all of it. And I did yeah. at his age too. And um, I mean, thankfully he's very lean and active, but um, you know, it is, it's really, it's really challenging. And um everything you read. I mean, I used to enjoy food, Jay. <laughs> I, used to, I used to enjoy it. And now it's like, there's a lot of fear 
it, it's it's empowering, okay, to eat really well. But then, like the times you don't, you think, oh, what am I doing? Am I screwing up my insulin? Am I ruining my right. hormones? Am I right. am I putting mold in my body? Oh my god! Right. Like peanuts right. have become terrifying. Right. So <laughs> it is right. it is hard. And and then during those times. I have to regroup and collect myself, right? And and go back to my first book, Eat, Drink, and Be Gorgeous, where the motto was, your body may be a temple, but who says it can't be a nightclub? Right. And right. that pleasure is the best nutrient of all. And um, I go back to, I, I watch, you know, a lot of documentaries and do a lot of reading on mindset. And yes, there is a lot of junk food. There absolutely is out there. But I also believe the mind is the most important thing, the mindset, um, the positive thinking, not just not just pop culture, positive right. psychology, but right. real like this food is going to it's going to be OK. I'm nourished. I'm healed. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm whole. You know, it, if you have a piece of pizza and you go off, you know, off plan or, you know, some sips of a soda or movie theater popcorn, like the world really won't come to an end and no. you really will be okay. Um, and it, it, if I think if you're grounded as a human, I think if you are moving every day uh, and you're building muscle and you're getting good quality protein, I mean, that is like meat is one of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet, meat and liver, and you're getting, you know, uh, real vegetables, which are non-GMO, Right. And you're watching your starches, especially making sure they come from root vegetables, for example. Um, I think you're going to be absolutely fine in all of this. I That's think I can't believe you're not a vegan. I'm just kidding. I have <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny. At, when I wrote Cave Women Don't Get Fat, I was really, really sick. Like I kind of had this chronic mystery illness and, you know, one practitioner thought it was Epstein-Barr and, uh, and my titers are, were pretty high. Um, so I did, I did do a vegan diet for a short time to, and it really, it did help me at the time. But then of course my body was like, where's the steak already? Yeah. Come on. So I, right. I went back, right. but it does, you know, vegan, uh, plant-based diets do help my people with chronic mystery illness. And it helps people with a real fatty liver. I use it as a detox, as a cleanse. It's a detox. It's, I was just going to say it's that. It's not a longevity thing. No. I mean, once I'm treating, no. you know, people for hormone imbalances and all sorts of other issues, metabolic dysregulation, then of course, protein is is queen for sure. Or king. So, so we, you and I could go really, really deep on this and. I told you that I only was going to do a 45 minute podcast with you. So maybe we can, uh, do another, we can do another one to be fair to both of our times, but we, we are going to go deeper on this right now because you just said it metabolic dysregulation. If you fixate on a specific energy fuel source, vegan, low carb, you know, keto, uh, you know, if it fits your macros, you know, Atkins, whatever, you ultimately cause some sort of dysregulation or a break in, you know, your, how do I want to say it? Like, you know, your homeostasis. Okay. Because the body is preferring or will always ultimately prefer metabolic flexibility. Right. So like I always, whenever I talk about this, like in my books, you know, I always say like, it doesn't matter how you eat. It's, are you remaining and giving your body the opportunity to, to remain metabolically flexible, right? In case in point, like you're a bodybuilder, you need carbohydrates. Don't come to me and say you can be a keto bro. And, and, and Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Thank so, you. Yeah. So, you know, if you're a, 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 an iron your triathlete, right? And you want to experiment with ketosis to fuel, you know, your energetic demand, go, go for it, right? Like you're most likely not, in my opinion, going to do as well. Um, as someone who's going to use, you know, a low glycemic carbohydrate in a higher amount of, of consumption again, but there's debates to that. And there's obviously research that shows both sides of things. But again, ultimately, if you choose to remain metabolically flexible, right. And the metabolically flexible person is somebody who's incorporating fasting. They're incorporating, you know, uh, periods of like plant-based green, you know, leafy green, you know, uh, uh, you know, stuff that creates fiber and roughage and, and, and that kind of stuff. And we'll also incre you know, incorporate 
uh, plant-based, pro- I mean, not plant-based protein, but animal-based protein or, yeah. you know, yeah. good uh, essential amino acids. So uh, to me, there is no perfect diet. It's yeah. do you create a metabolically flexible metabolism, you know, a, a human being who remains metabolically flexible. And, you know, for me, and again, we're all different, but and biochemical unique, it's like incorporating fasting at various points in your life, right? Is that once a week where you go 30 hours without eating? Is that like what I do or my wife and I do where we, we fast like 18 hours a day, three or four days a week, right? It's like that, you know, we kind of have an every other day, alternative day fasting. But again, everybody can create a lifestyle that they're going to adhere to, but it's remaining metabolically flexible. And when you, you know, aspire to adhere to that principle uh, existence, you will be happier. Like you said, it's back to getting to joy, right? Because who the fuck wants to meal prep every Saturday and Sunday and have all their meals stacked up in their glass, you know, bowls and fridge and uh, uh, uh. So <laughs> my, 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 my calendar went off. I got a notification. I got to go eat my yams and my grass fed, you know, beef. I mean, it's, it's a balance, right? Like you said, at the very beginning of this podcast, joy, how do we attain joy in our lives? And as you said, eating is so fun. You know, it's a great thing. It's something that we experience. It's like our sensations to feel eating clean, healthy food. So like, why deny yourself that opportunity? So again, metabolic flexibility, have ice cream. You know, I had cookies and cream ice cream. Yes. Yum. Yes. Yes. And your body composition is much better for it. I do. I do believe in the treats for that. It, it busts up the plateaus. But, you know, again, talk about flexibility, right? Like I work with a lot of women who are in their 40s and 50s. They have multiple children. And for them, the food prep's actually the life the lifesaver because they don't have to think it's done. And when they're driving kids to three different sports to come home and have dinner done, enables them to stay on track. So it yeah. is, right? Like it's I'm so- not against it at all. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying that for the average person, yes. it's better to create a lifestyle where you well, first off, you don't have the shit in your house. But as you and I know, when you have kids, you have shit in your house. It's just not way. I remember oh, when I was, yeah. I remember when I was like you know a freak and like you know I didn't eat anything that was not right and you know I was you know meal prepping and all that stuff. But like you know my brother had young kids and I laughed because him and I got in this conversation this a long time ago before I had my children, and I was like, why do you let them eat that shit? And he looked at me and he goes. Ha, ha, ha. He goes, I'm just glad they eat, right? So it's like when you're a parent, you know, yeah. getting them to eat clean and getting them to eat is like two different things, especially when they're really young, right? So like I oh, learned yeah. that myself with my little daughters, you know, when they came later, because I was like a parent. I didn't have my kids until I was 36 and 37 or 36, 38, right? So I didn't experience having kids younger. And I was like, you know, into this, you know, I was a freak, right? I was very anal retentive and I, you know, I, I was doing that stuff. I was meal prepping. Yeah. I didn't let anything in, but you know, you do get to a point where it's like, how much, you know, can you be, you know, anal retentive and militaristic versus, you know, enjoyment and letting your kids like eat like normal kids. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and also you want them to have the tools. I mean, same thing. Like I had my son when I was 36 and, um, when you, you know, in the beginning, yeah, absolutely control as much as you can because those years are really formative and important. Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, at some point, right, they start, you know, my son, he, he just, he bikes, he's got 10 bucks in his pocket. He's going to go to town center and he's going to go get a sandwich <laughs> and a donut or whatever he gets. He can right? only I don't eat know. so much broccoli, right? He can only eat so much broccoli, but he also eats. I mean, last night we had venison. We had a salad from our own garden and right. I roasted potatoes with like really great olive oil and, wow. and good quality sea salt. So he eats all right. He's, he's so flexible in his eating. He'll eat anything from bone marrow to escargot awesome. to sardines to, so his palate's really broad. And that to me is important. Cause I'm like, he can eat all the crap he wants, but he's going to come back to his roots. And he's a wonderful chef as well. He loves to cook, constantly watches cooking awesome. videos, figures out. He's like, dad, get the pan ripping hot before you sear those steaks. I mean, he's like, he's into it. That's awesome. So, um, 
So yeah, I, I think it's like setting your kids up for success where they know what the good choices are and when they decide, and my son even said to me, he goes, mom, I'm gonna eat a lot of crap for a while, but then I'll come back to the good stuff. I said, okay, that's cool. I mean, cause it is, it's a real, I'm like you, I'm a type A Virgo, like yeah. control is my middle name. I see. Yeah. And it's, it's really, uh, he's my great spiritual teacher to teach me like, let go and just breathe. And he's okay. Yes. He's alive, right? He's alive. He's happy. He's healthy. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's that's enough. So, that's so awesome. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with us Navy seal, Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 PM Pacific standard time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level Intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. So I have two daughters. Uh, well, three non-biological, but three, uh, two sons and a daughter, non-biological. And one of them is a freshman in college right now. And she's amazing. And she's been like a, truly a biological to my two biological daughters. But, uh, you know, we had a Brady Bunch household for a while, but uh, my, thir <laughs> my 13 and 11 year old, again, my biologicals cannot be different. I mean, cannot be more different. The 13 year old <laughs> is, is a natural athlete, eats clean and healthy, doesn't eat crap. And the 11 year old is like, the, the polar opposite. Right. And you don't ever understand why your children are like that. Like you said, like, you know, there's that spiritual component, like, you know, you, sometimes you see one of your kids and you're like, wow, that person came back to guide me, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then the other one came back to haunt you. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, you got, you know, you, again, they're polar opposites. And, they, and as yeah. you know, you can raise them exactly the same but they both have their own quirks, their personalities, their unique nuances and all these different things. And so it doesn't really matter. You know, you know, the nature versus nurture argument goes out the window by the time girls become teenagers pretty fast. Right. <laughs> and so th at least they're, th they love each other. I I'm grateful for that, but they're yeah. so different, but yeah, it's weird because uh, the 11 year old just wants to eat garbage and you know she's not into exercise she does dance she dances but she won't go to the gym the 13 year old has been training with me since she was 12 like our we, we got a new chiropractor the other day and we got into the office to do an exam and he looked at me he's like does this girl lift weights and i'm like yeah bro she's been lifting with my wife and i for a year and a half and he's like she's 13 years old and i'm like yeah dude so you know she's tall she's big she's you know she grew early um, so, I mean, it's just, it's funny, but like the, the way our kids are, they don't always mimic us no matter how good, yeah. of you know, role models slash leaders we are to them. They, everybody, every soul is kind of evolving and growing at their own rate and speed. Right. Yeah. And I, I think as long as you provide a stable foundation and you teach them their roots, right. We always say roots and wings, you give them roots to know they're grounded and the wings to, to fly and go live their lives. That's beautiful. It's really amazing. Yeah. Then they come back. I, I find like we've always, and I'm sure you're the same way. Like we've always given our son as much autonomy as possible. Or like, as long as you're honest with us and that, you know, right. we'll give you a lot of freedom and flexibility. And uh, he was one of the few kids in his grade to ever bike to school. And then now once with COVID, then it, it started changing, yeah. but you know, we're like, go, go see the world, be safe, put lights on your bike and wear a helmet. And the rest is up to God. Like, you've got to go out and just trust as much as it's scary. And a lot of parents, I think today we're in a very overly protective culture. Oh, yeah. yeah. We are yeah. way too involved in our kids' lives. Uh, really? And, and do we have to be all, we have to be right. We have like shootings. That's a real thing. Okay. We have kids who are on homework and systems that are really just way too taxing I, as adults. I don't think most of us would follow that regime. <laughs> Uh, which is why we pulled our son out and put him in private. We were like, we're going to end this madness. But, um, you know, and, and so I, I think it would behoove us all to just kind of step back and let our kids make their mistakes the way our parents let us make mistakes. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's a totally different age. It, it, it's it's a shame. I mean, I think about, and I know you were just like me, we're probably right around the same age, but like I played, yeah. kick, I played kick the can 
until it was 11 o'clock at night every single night until my mom and dad came out on the porch to take get your ass in <laughs> like there was no supervision no, no. And it, but again like you said you know we we learned self responsibility and personal accountability and we didn't have anybody to guide us and to you know mother over us or helicopter parent over us or any of that stuff. It, it, you're right. It's a totally different day and age. And I get it, you know, that technology and, you know, weirdos and, you know, BS it's out there, but it's, it's all projection, right? Like if you project fear, your kid's going to pick up on the fear. So you're right. I, I love that roots and wings. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Never heard that before. I'm oh, that. thank you. But, but yeah. grounding, you know, grounding, the actual process of grounding and teaching your children to be grounded is like, you can't, I mean, that, that's what, that's what we teach too, you know, and my, yeah. my daughters absolutely do not even have to ask. And again, they're 13 to 11, but there's a, they have a friend, a, a girl that's like 16 is in our neighborhood. And if they want to go to Starbucks, they just go, they don't ask me for permission. <laughs> right. I mean, they, you know, they, they, they're riding their bikes together. And, you know, they know what to do and they, they just go and, and, and unfortunately they have cell phones, right? So they'll text me and say, Hey dad, I'm going, you know, they used to be, can, can I go? And now it's just like, Hey dad, I'm going, you know? And if I say, no, you're not, you know, I'll text them back and they'll come back. But yeah, you, you have to give your children, um, like you said, autonomy, yeah. you have to create an, an autonomic or autonomic aspect of their existence that they're like, Hey man, I'm good. You know, I can do this on myself. You know, you, the, the over pretend you're so right. Like I, you see so many parents today that literally put their kids in a box and then micromanage them. It's insane. Yeah. And then, and then we wonder why anxiety disorders are on the rise. It's because it's, it's just, they can't even wipe their own behinds. You know, they've never had to make a decision. They have everything given to them. Nothing's earned. Don't even my, get me started with that. My, my, I mean, my son is earning. I said, do you want to go to sleepaway camp this summer? He goes, no, he got two jobs. <laughs> He's, 14. Awesome. No, He's 14. He's like, no, I want to work and I want to earn money and buy a new bike. Great. Knock yourself out. Like That's it's awesome. I, because there's no, he has to earn, you know, we'll, we'll give him money to a certain point or say, Hey, if you need this, we'll get you this. But, but then if you want the extra parts, like we got him a new bike for his bar mitzvah. Okay, great. But then any parts, any upgrades, you earn that money and you pay for it yourself. We're not fixing your flat tires. You break your bike, you fix it. Like you really have to let your people, let your kids make mistakes. I know I sound very preachy, so forgive that. No, but no, 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 no. It's amazing. You, I mean, you've got to like there. let your kids make the mistakes. Let them fail. Let them screw up. How else are they going to learn? If they're so I'm protected, never. they don't know yeah. how to make a choice. They don't know how to make a judgment call. They don't know, like they're just terrified of everything and overprotected. And it's a, it's a big mistake. Like it, it really is. It leads to a lot of helplessness, anxiety, depression. Um, so yeah. yeah. No, no, I get it. I, I want to spend like the last 15 minutes talking about illness and root cause yes. and like, the Dutch test, but yes. just to add to what you're saying, we are in same, so on the same wavelength. We were driving by the other day and I saw a Jack in the box and it said, we're desperate now accepting jobs and positions for, you know, anybody at a Jack in the box starting at $15 an hour. And I was thinking to wow. myself, you know what, if my 13 year old daughter was not in cheer, which is brutal, you know, oh. she's in the travel chair. Yeah. Yeah. She's in travel chair. So I would be like, I would literally drop her off and say, go get a job and work from 9am. Cause they're, you know, in California, it's still, as I told you, like nuts, right? Like they barely let them go to school. I mean, both of my daughters are literally starting homeschool that's it. We're done. We're, we're, yeah. you know, they'll be, in, they'll yeah. be at home for right. moving forward. So great. You know, I would love to put her at Jack in the box for five hours, you know, earning $15 an hour a day. She, she could still do her school in the morning. She could work from like 12 until five and then literally have her practice from seven to nine a cheer. Right. But I mean, she's only 13 and my wife was like, no way she's too young, but it's like what, what you <laughs> said is true. What you said is true. Like that teaches responsibility and personal accountability. And yeah. if all our kids had that and they had that schedule and then they became, you know, attached to that mindset of like, wow, this is a productive human being. This is what I do every day. Yeah. I mean, imagine the, the value and the self-worth they gain as they become adults, but that you're right. We don't do that. There's not parents. Most parents are not doing that. You know, oh, my kid's not going to get a, a job until they're out of, they're either in college or they're, you know, out of the house. And 
It's big crazy. mistake. Big yeah. mistake. You guys, I know kids school's rigorous and I know kids are in school and have uh, totally. athletic schedules that are really intense, but get them some kind of job at some point, because otherwise you show up to the workplace, you have no idea what you're doing. You've never reported to anyone, you've never been responsible for anything. You, you don't, it, you don't have the communication skills. It's very different. If you start, I, I, like, I was I started working when I was 12. School. Yeah. What's I was that? just going to tell you, I, I was just going to say the same thing. I, I was a star yeah. athlete and I still sold the newspaper door to door whenever I could. For yeah. three hours a day, if it was in between practice, I literally went and I made money. I started, like you, you said, 12, I was at 13. I was 13. Yeah. So there's no reason that you cannot take ownership as a kid, you know, again, roots and wings, you know, from a good parent and, and go out there and earn in the time that you have. But you're right. These kids today, and I don't want to go in that because I want to get into what we're going to talk about, but you know, they're fo focused on video games and focused on mm -hmm. social media and distractions. Yeah. And not productive things. Right. So, all right, chronic right. illness. Okay. Right. Well, that chronic, was an awesome talk. Chronic <laughs> illness. Chronic illness. We still got a good 10, 15 minutes, but chronic yeah. illness. So my wife says this, and I want you to react to this, and I, I know you're going to get amazing stuff, but she's like, most people do not value their health until they don't have their health, until it's gone. Right? Yeah. Isn't that pretty much where we're at? And I'm going to add to that and say most people don't realize how bad they feel until they start feeling better. Exactly. I have a yeah. woman who's 42 who is so, oh, who I've been treating for a long time and the behavioral aspects are in her way. And she's so out of shape now. She said, I'm so embarrassed. And my heart went out to her. She said, I said, can you at least walk 20 minutes a day? She's type two diabetic now. I've seen her whole, I, I'm the one who diagnosed her with that. Her own doctor right. did not. And uh, she, and she said, I'm so out of shape. I can't even, I can't even do my elliptical. I can't move my arms and legs right. at the same time. Right. So, um, you know, we are in a place where we're really, really deconditioned. It's it's actually quite scary. Um, yeah. It's a, it's alarming where we're at as a human species. It's crazy. So, yeah, yeah, most people don't realize it. You know, they'll say, oh, you know, like the house will literally be burning behind them. And they'll say, oh, do you yeah. smell smoke? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you really can't wait. And And some of it's personal responsibility. Some of it is just a lack of education and awareness. And the third thing is that our medical system, and I don't want to point fingers oh. at doctors, because I think doctors are very caring humans. I really think there's so many good doctors, but they're not given the tools. Our no. educational system and our medical system does not allow for people to be optimal. It allows for them to be normal, right? You're normal. Oh, that's so common. Oh, that's normal. I see. Normal just means your doctor sees it all the time. Right. It doesn't mean it's optimal or it's going to contribute to your longevity or it's safe to be that way. Beautiful. Esther, there's, so, no, there's no normalcy in optimization or wellness. Right. None. Okay. The allopathic med medical system. And again, I'm like you, I have plenty of friends and, you know, I happen to, uh, you know, work amongst many of them, but it is a farce. It has failed. No person today who really truly wants to live optimal, like you said, you know, my whole statement is fully optimized. You cannot be there unless you take this into your own hands and you work with someone like you, you know, you seek out people like me, you read our books. You, you, there, there's zero doctor, you know, physician, primary care practitioner, you know, practitioner, you know, PPO, HMO, none of that. That is sick care. That is yeah. managing people who have diseases through color-coded pills and intervals. There, there's no optimal. I mean, anybody today who thinks they can go to their doctor and get better health, is it, that's what? I mean, what world are you living in? That, again, is triaged sick care. People will come and they'll say, yeah, but bro, I can only afford my copayment. Well, then go, that, go pay your copayment. And just realize that you are on the death spiral by the time you turn 55 with type 2 diabetes and color-coded pills for, until you die at 70. Well, and right? guess what else? I looked up in Forbes, like, what is the cost of staying unhealthy, oh. having one or two diagnoses? It's at least $5,000 a year. So you can either right. pay that from your hospital bill or you can pre pay it preventatively. And people can, right. you know, I, I've had people with no jobs invest Absolutely. with me. 
Uh, yeah. And the thing is too, like, yes, I get to the root cause, but advocacy, patient advocacy and liaising with their doctor and or finding them a new doctor, a functional medicine doctor, right. they see, because initially they say, well, that doctor is not covered by insurance. And right. I say, well, neither am I, but yet here we right. are. Like, do you want a permanent solution for your problems or do you want to be having this problem 10 years down the road when you've spent 10 times the money? So just roll up your sleeves, invest in yourself because exactly. so you can do better at your job, get that promotion, have healthy orgasms, have a healthy libido, have a good self image, have right. working digestion and not be hot flashing and sweating all night. So all of those things, you know, it's your quality of life is worth investing in. It's, it's crazy. I always say like, if you can't afford, and obviously, you know, there's different levels of socioeconomic development, but if you cannot afford five to $10,000 a year on your personal health care, your priorities are all out of whack because it's impossible not to find that money. Even for a $40,000 a year old, I mean, a year middle, middle, or, you know, income earner to, you know, the six figure and up executives, you know, that's insane that you could literally justify that you only have your co-payment. It's priorities. It's priorities. Yes. It's that simple. Okay. You wanted to talk about the the Dutch test mm. and, you know, why, and, and again, I'm a huge proponent of this too. Uh, why blood tests, you know, again, being proactive with your health, why this is like so important. Well, so uh, the Dutch test, it stands for dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. And I do it alongside blood tests. And now I actually do stool testing with it too. But for today, we'll talk about the Dutch. So the Dutch- No, dude, come on. I want to go into fecal matter. You want to go into fecal matter? Oh, I'm all about that shit. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it's, good, it's good to do gut tests because a lot of yeah. your gut function contributes to or, or can- can offset or support hormone production um, and the recycling of estrogen. I see high estrogen in men and women. It's not just a female problem, guys, because yeah. you've seen plenty of men with movies. I yeah. I laugh that yeah. Bill Gates is like all about soy. He has like he needs a, a bro at this point. Yeah, he's from eating all his yeah. own crap. Um, but yeah, so the Dutch test I look at because a lot of the women coming to me are going through. Me, uh, I, I was going to say menopause, menopause and menopause, right? I do Penny. treat men yeah. too. Right. And, um, you know, people are coming to me with hot flashes, insomnia, brain sure. fog. Uh, they're coming with a lot of weight gain, which when your progesterone and estrogen drop, you also have changes in your gut function. You become, yeah. you know, you can develop IBS and, and constipation and a lot of bloating. So I work hand in hand uh, with the two. The Dutch also looks at your morning and your metabolized cortisol. Right. It tests 21 different androgens. So it tests your production of your sex hormones, but it also looks at your methylation or detoxification right. pathways. That is key because if your estrogen is going down the very pro-inflammatory pathway, right. coupled with low progesterone due to chronic stress or aging, then you can be very estrogen dominant. And that's when we, uh, or be more prone to cancers, hormone related cancers. So that's why we really wanna make sure if you're a candidate for hormone replacement that you're detoxing your hormones properly. You wanna make sure that you're balanced. Uh, you know, Even if you're not in menopause, you wanna make sure that you're, I, I treat a lot of young women in their 30s um, who right. have significant hormone imbalances due to oh, just yeah. modern day stress, poor diet, poor gut function. So it's a really comprehensive way to get to the root cause without putting a woman on the pill or Mirena, oh, which only horrible. suppresses and drives your hormones down rock bottom, rock bottom. I yeah, see more I problems with those. Um, so it's, it's really important that you do address this and we correct that with lifestyle. We, you know, some of my clients, I'm like, take your TV out of your bedroom. I want no blue oh, lights in there. Nothing. Right. Or getting off your screens at night or saying no to people or, you know, building in self-care, building in um, workouts, building in uh, meditation or saunas or baths or just walking every day. Right. Maybe I need to take them off of their Pelotons and their cardio addiction and get them more walking and weight based, get them more in a parasympathetic state versus, sure. you know, fight or flight all the time. 
Um, and then also we correct with diet because most people, my male and female clients, I'm seeing a lot of protein deficiency, oh, I'm yeah. seeing trace mineral deficiencies, right? Um, and then also supplements and or hormone replacement as needed. But I couldn't do that before I was doing all this testing. I still had a decent success rate, which was pretty amazing because a lot of it was guesswork for me. And now sure. I'm like, oh, well, you got to measure and then manage and give protocols based on what's exactly happening in your body versus what I think it is. Yeah. That, that's it's very a, different. Mean, very high value information. Um, yeah. I mean, the only my only point to that was all great stuff is that, you know, we are in such a contaminated environment, you know, you, <clears throat> you hit on it, you know, from the plastic and the water bottles, you know, I mean, I literally drink Icelandic water with deuterium depleted water, right? Like I counterbalance it, but it's still in Woo! plastic. It's still, and it's, it's still in plastic. I mean, why can't you put it in good old metal? You know, I, mean, I can, if I want, I'm too lazy, but like literally, yeah. literally just you and I on the screen, like the, 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 the EMFs that are coming out of blue light, especially like high, you know, re, you know, resonance, like, you know, a 5k iMac, like I'm talking to you on right now, you know, yeah. from these, from these, you know, I talk to people, you know, I, I, I talked to Dr. Anthony J, you know, the astrogenic researcher and stuff. And he talks about the car, like the, the polycarbons that come out of these. I mean, this is military grade resin. This shit gets into your cuticles. I mean, we don't even realize like Ugh. how contaminated yeah. our environment is. And, yeah. you know, people like you and I, I mean, we could tell them and talk, you know, till we're blue in the face, but until people become again, you know, proactive and not reactive to all of this stuff, it's just, it's very difficult. You know, you, you don't have an easy job. I mean, like no. you said, you know, you can use the Dutch test and you can evaluate so many different protocols of like where people are falling or yeah. you know, doing okay in life. But until they start, you know, again, being more proactive, like you said, that's the biggest thing. I know so many people who literally use Apple watches and sleep with them on. Oh, I know. It's really scary. I know. It's like, dude, that's an EMF device radiating your body as you sleep at night, disturbing, you know, polyphasic sleep, disturbing REM sleep. I mean, it's radiating their, their body. Yeah, but I'm like, dude, it's measuring my heart rate. Yeah, your cortisol. My HRV. I'm I'm tracking my HRV, bro. I'm like, dude, no. You know, wear an aura ring. You know, get Thank like you. I have exactly. The sleep, I got the eight sleep mattress, right? Like, there's nothing technological in my room, or you know, everything yeah. is blacked out. We have no yes. technology. Yeah. The only thing I have in my bedroom that's technology based is a. Uh, my wife uses the ocean machine. You nice. know what I mean? On the floor in the corner of our thing. And it's just plugged into the wall, but we have nothing else. Do you want to laugh? Like, we have like the white noise machine that the therapists use, like the sharper yeah. image, little old fashioned. Yeah, that, well, we used to have that, but my brother-in-law got us a new one, like literally uh, this year. And it, you know, it, it's one yeah. of those ones where it changes the light in the morning. Oh, so nice. At a certain time, yeah, it projects like a light up and stuff like that. And then it changes from the ocean to like the nature, you know, the, you know, the insects. <laughs> and the birds. Yeah, it's amazing. But I mean, yeah. I have nothing else in my room. Like you said, people, yeah, how many same. people still have TVs in their bedroom? Oh, I know. That's a hard, yes. And, and listen, the hardest thing for people to change are the lifestyle pieces or just, and, and, you know, the majority of the time we have like one conversation in the beginning about no EMFs, but the majority of the time I spend my time just getting to be consistent with their eating um, to try right. and eat on a Tuesday, the way you do on a Saturday night with the occasional, of course, indulgence is fine, a cocktail or a dessert sometimes, but most of the time you're kind of adherent. Um, and just also um, managing stress and like going to bed at a decent hour. I try and get people as close to 10, 1030 as possible, which is, again, my most obese clients are going to bed 132, 230. I'm like, there you go. So right. I'm just spending so much time tackling the basics and just real food and like behavioral modification. That's, that's where we spend the majority of time. And the good news is, yes, there is pollution, there is plastics, there is EMF exposure, but people still respond and lose weight to the most simple changes. And for the most part, there's nothing within my people that cannot be healed. I mean, I can't bring back an amputation, but you know, for the most part, like 
it's reversible what's in us. And people don't realize that either. They think I have this, I got the diabetes and I got to take my <laughs> pills forever. And no, that's actually not true. If you would just about, lose how, weights. You just killed me. How about when they say, but diabetes runs in my family? No, oh, the diabetes. your yeah. lifestyle of eating like shit and not exercising runs in your family. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how many times have you heard that? Like, well, my doctor said the diabetes is genetic. The diabetes is genetic. I don't have a single wow. thing that I don't have any of my parents' genetic diseases or issues, not one, because I eat so differently. I live my life so differently right. than they live theirs. So. Epa genetics. Yes. Epa genetics. Epa That's genetics. You've been absolutely amazing. I took you off the beaten Thank path you. because I knew when we first started talking <laughs> that you were one of those people to do that with. And this was a phenomenal podcast. Uh, if you want uh, to push people to other places, if people want to work with you when they watch the show, like obviously what is the best way for them to do that? Yep. So go to estherblum.com. I have a free gift for anyone who opts in. Um, you can find me on Instagram at gorgeous Esther. Love that. You can also, Jay, for five of your listeners, I opened up spots in my calendar for a 30-minute consultation. These are for people who are serious about leveling up their health. And on the call, you will take away three personalized strategies to move the needle for you towards your specific goals. So um, for that, you go to estherblum.com forward slash call, C-A-L-L. Amazing. I, I truly appreciate you coming on the show today. You are Thank a you. beacon of wisdom and of course, light, which is even more important and a phenomenal show. I mean, we talked about a lot of things. I think there's very high value. So thank you. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And listen, we should do this again because this was a ton of fun. You are yeah. so brilliant and insightful. So thank you. Thank you. you. I, I appreciate that. I received that. Thank you so much. And we will, <laughs> and we'll go deeper on metabolism. I think that you and I can have yeah. a really deep discussion on that. So thank you. And, and all, of course, to all of you guys that are supporting the Jay Campbell podcast, support the amazing people who come on. Please go to estherblum.com, book a call with her, and obviously follow her on socials. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.